This is the NFL recap for week 14. <laughs> Man. It's, it's gone. Brought, it's brought gone to you by, by Tunica, Mississippi. Quickly. Brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi. Yes. yes. Go ahead. It has gone by quickly. Tunica, Mississippi, South's premier sports gambling destination. Uh, they got six incredible sports books down there. You can find more information on all of them over at tunicatravel.com. You can find more information about us, all of our social media, our picks, previews, all of our YouTube stuff over at winningcureseverything.com. If you are on YouTube, hit subscribe, leave some comments, tell us what we got right, what we got wrong, whether you think we're idiots or not. We appreciate all of it. Easy on the idiot stuff. <laughs> we have feelings. We do have feelings, but uh, but you ain't going to hurt mine because I know about 90% of y'all are just as dumb as we are. That's what happens. That doesn't make me feel better about myself. <laughs> All right, give me this recap, man. Let's roll into it. All right. I, I tried so hard to think about where I wanted to start. And and the only thing after watching Sunday, which was probably the best day of football that we've had all year. Well, it's a, a bunch of the games upsets, underdogs. We're, we're not just upsets. Just every game came down to the wire. Then the evening games, same thing. Then Sunday night football culminated in what I believe to be one of the greatest regular season NFL games I've ever watched, even though it only had one offensive touchdown. Just unbelievable football. The only thing I could come up with is week 14 was the single period, dumbest period week I have ever watched in my life. (laughs) Just the dumbest crap happened over and it made for exciting finishes. It most certainly did. We will start with my Patriots. Okay. And the miracle in Miami. What the hell happened? Well, one, you got Gronk back there. Uh I don't understand why the Patriots thought that mm-hmm. Tannehill would be able to throw it that far. It, it, yeah, coming I mean, off of a mis- shoulder. Miscalculation. Injury. Bill talks about that. I mean he he owned it. It's on him. And uh, and he he but the other side of it the the other side of it is uh, I mean this is like just basic fundamentals, you know and and yeah sometimes crazy things happen, but it was just like bad angles they didn't play their gaps they were looking at the ball too much like if Gronk doesn't fall like he pushes him out of bounds pretty easily that literally it's Gronk it's not even Gronk being out there Gronk just fell down yeah no absolutely I mean that's just it. If Gronk doesn't fall, he's he's big enough and strong enough to to push Drake out of bounds. Oh, he's well, of course he's big enough, and he's he's Here's, probably fast enough, depending on the angle. He didn't even need an angle. His long his arms are long enough; he could have reached him and pushed him out of bounds. I watched that play a thousand. Here's my problem: being being the bully that the Patriots have been forever. When people beat them, it usually is in dramatic fashion, which means those plays last forever and, and i will watch them you feel the same way about the kick six right like oh yeah like listen the kick six the, was the, in a little the, bit bigger situation the david because Ty- the, the david one, tyree catch okay yeah that's that's about philly philly in this play yeah can, over can all over. go find a dark dark place in the recesses of your buttholes i'm done with them i don't want to <laughs> see them anymore because that's just it. Like when when the Patriots lose, it's it's in dramatic fashion usually. Yeah, and and it lives forever. And now you're stuck watching it. Now I know the the comeback that I have people give me is is well we've been stuck watching you guys win for you know two decades. Like well, and like, it, it generally I takes it. a miracle like this or one of those special plays to be able to beat the Patriots. I think it's actually fun. Like I wasn't even mad when when I saw it. I was I was in shock, but I wasn't mad. I wasn't upset. I'm like, you know what? They shouldn't have came down to that. They missed two extra points, a field goal, and then like Tom takes a sack going into halftime to, to take another he, field goal. Yeah, off he the thought board. he had another timeout. Like, like this, or whatever. this could have been like an eight point win before we even I mean, got it to been, this point. It could have been double digit win. That's it. And so I, I'll tell you this. So Mark Slayball. It, it, I, I brought this up to you on Sunday. I said, are you you betting your Patriots today? And yeah. you were like, yeah, I'd probably take them today. I said, it's moved to like minus nine. You said, yeah, yeah no, like it, Dolphins I don't think are, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, but the Patriots have always had trouble going down to Miami. Now, Mark Schleyball was on with Clay Travis earlier this week, and he said, look, when you are a cold-weather team 
and it starts to get cold, uh, going to Miami is terrible. He said, like, you have put on kind of that extra layer. No, that, that, that's that's just not true. The reason the record that's, is I what mean, it he's is. He's a player. Like I, he I get said, it. I get it. But it, he's 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 wrong on that. I don't think that's the reason that the I, Patriots. I have like followed. That. I have followed this team forever. It does have to do with playing in Miami. They are seven and ten at Miami over the last seventeen games. So that's that's Bill Belichick's not whole record, but it's a long time. Yeah. Um. He here's what it is. If you go back and look, about eighty percent of the time the Patriots play in Miami. It's always one of the first two or three weeks of the season. It's not when it's cold and we go down there and it's warm and they've got that extra. That's all bullshit. That didn't really happen. It's it's t- they just got beat Sunday and it doesn't matter where it is because the weather's pretty mild. Like it's yeah. warm for the country, but it's still pretty mild. Anybody can play in mild weather. It's when it's a hundred and twenty degrees on the field with a hundred percent humidity in August or September. Not August, but September when they play down there. Yeah. That's where the Patriots have zero chance of winning ever ever and so that's where they've racked up most of those w's at home it, it's not it's not all the years um where they've gone down rarely do they play there in december but playing in december miami is not that big of a deal they got beat they got out coached at the end of the game not the entire game they got out coached at the end of the game. one thing that does bother me though if you if you pull something out of your hat and you win a game like that congratulations it was super exciting to watch I got no problem with it. Doesn't upset me at all. Uh, it's it's good for the game. I do think it's fun. Here's my problem: Don't go get in front of a camera and say, "Oh, we drew it up, and we 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 believe that we could win this game." And, no, but this all that's all bull. Like, I just want real responses. Be genuinely excited. But the reason you're so excited is because you didn't think that was going to happen, and that's freaking awesome. Yeah. Like like be pumped about it, but don't act like we planned it and we practiced it and well we know if we've got a last second play you know we saw Gronk out there so we knew we're not gonna throw this we're gonna hook and lateral it like like you 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 didn't go to the sideline and do that you threw it to playmakers and they did what they had to do and it worked yeah that's awesome but you got got lucky that that guys took bad angles and everything else you got lucky so, yeah, I mean that's what it was. It was a it was a luck play. We we spent a long time on that game. I don't really know what games, and we're not gonna we're not gonna go through all the games like we usually do. Um, if you listen to the podcast, they're, they're really long already. Anyway, we got a ton of college stuff we're get to. There's a few games I want to touch on. The Baltimore Kansas City game, incredible game. I I don't know what to do to talk about how great Patrick Mahomes has been. This Baltimore team is real. They're good. They have figured out their new identity. Um, you got to give John Harbaugh a lot of credit for that. Like, I know oh, that yeah. I'm talking about the losing team here, but John Harbaugh remade this team in a completely different image with a quarterback that that is running a totally different offensive style. Yeah. Like, literally, he, he took Flacco. Lamar and Flacco could not be more different in how they have to run their offense. Yeah, and and you got other coaches. I'm going to transition. This is going to kind of be a flowing conversation. Jay Gruden saying we have to bring in certain quarterbacks that only know our system. Well, John says, "Hell, I ain't got a system. I, I got a quarterback that I think is pretty good, and he's our starter. It's totally different." Yeah, we're going to work to what his we, talents are. We got a week to prepare. In this week, we're well, going to put I'll, in a whole give, different game plan. So, in the second half of the Washington <laughs> Giants game. Um, I will give Jay Gruden some credit because uh, the the Josh Johnson kid that came in, he did kind of just let him go and do his thing. You're down by 40. Uh, yeah, I mean, you once you're down by let 40. A, let a like, rip, Tater Chip. We got nothing else to lose. But I do wonder if if that's something that like he'll just he'll let him do from here on because like the, the Redskins have no chance of doing anything at this point. No. Like Sanchez is – Obviously not the answer, and they, that, they it, should be tanking right now. Like they, 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 they like their yeah, but goal how much can you tank be, when you're already a six win team? Well, that's right. You know, so like at that oh, point, oh, like, I don't know about that. I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of three win, te- three loss, te- three win teams out there. I mean, I think, I think there's Oakland and the 49ers and the Cardinals, but that but all have those, three wins. But they could all finish with another win, if not two more wins. Yeah, but I mean, at that point, like you still need them to. That's you know, I mean, so you're not getting the number one pick. But you're in the you're in the five. I mean, you, you could be, be in the you top. You get five. a top ten pick. 
Oh, top ten guaranteed. But so, you, you got to stop winning. But you, I mean, you got the Jags and we're like we're about the Falcons to get. And the Jets on, I know. I know we're not previewing right now. We're about to get Josh Johnson, Josh Jackson, and and Cody Kessler for an NFL football game. I don't know that there's yeah, a no, you t- yeah, Josh Johnson and I don't know that there's an AF team, that AAF team, that Cody Kessler could start for. I mean, I don't know that he's a pro quarterback, and I'm not just talking about in the NFL. Like, I don't think no, that guy right. could play quarterback at any level in the professional world. But what's more egregious? Like, tell me, <laughs> what is what is more egregious for the Jags? Is it the fact that they didn't work to upgrade the quarterback position with Blake Bortles, or that they didn't work to upgrade the backup slot? Oh, the backup slot, the backup slot. Because if you want to go into the season thinking Blake was two two drives away, maybe from from winning the AFC Championship game and taking you to a Super Bowl, then then I'm okay with that. You got you got to bring somebody in to give him some competition and or at least be competent if he loses the job. The, or if you get you, hurt, like you it, can't. It, you, the dude runs. You cannot start Cody Kessel this week. You really need to put Blake out there. Yeah. I, I mean, you, you you really do. Anyway, we're getting into previews. We're, we're getting away from it. We'll get back to the Chiefs. All right, so pa- back to week 14 recap. Pa- Patrick Mahomes is still doing things. We're in week 14, and every week we say, holy shit, this guy's doing something I've never seen before. He's clutch. I mean, it's it's pretty incredible what he's doing, and it's entertaining. I mean, it really is. it really is Brett Favre. Does it blow your mind that he could – like even if they lose by like a field goal to the Chargers, he could lose the MVP, lose home field advantage in the playoffs. Like everything could hinge on one game. On one game. That's right. And you know what? The guy that he's got to play next week, man, we're getting into next week's games again. Rivers could take the MVP and home field advantage in one swoop. Yep. I yep. mean that's that's pretty incredible. That Better team is ready good. to play. All right, we're we're gonna move on to a couple other games. Um, the the. Indianapolis Texans game, that was a stupid game. That like that was just a crazy, <laughs> yeah, was... weird, stupid game. I mean, I don't know what I'm, I don't know what I'm watching sometimes. I know this. Andrew Luck, pretty good at football again. Uh yeah. There were there was times where we legitimately had conversations about will he ever not just be the same, but be good at all. Uh and yes. And he's not just good. Uh he's real good. I mean, if we he's, don't have he's Patrick as good Mahomes as doing what he's doing, he's in the conversation with some of those guys as, "Hey, I don't have the talent you've got in San in San Diego in L.A. or 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 New Orleans, but I'm I'm here, guys. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I think he's good. I think those game, the Philadelphia Dallas. Game. I mean, they've, the Colts have an actual okay. shot at the playoffs. Oh yeah, they like can win the division. Like an actual legit. Uh, shot. I don't know if they can win the division. Well, they they could. I mean, the Texans would have to lose, lose out. out. I was about to say, would the Texans have to lose out, or could they win one of those? I think they had to lose out. So the Colts are what seven and six. Yeah, I think. And the, I think they went over five hundred last week. And the Texans are nine and four. Nine and four, seven and six. So, I mean, they'd really just have to get them to lose one, and then you'd have to worry about the tiebreaker. And I don't know what the tiebreaker is with them. I think they've split, and they I, don't have split. The tie, I don't know what the tiebreaker is. Because the Colts are the ones that gave them their first win. That's right. I remember that. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. They were 0-4. Like it, and then they would have been – well, no, they were 0-3. 0-3. If they, they go 0-4, would have been, Bill O'Brien is fired. Well, no, they, they would have been 0-3-1 and 1 because they would have tied. You think they would have tied? Yes, absolutely they would have tied. Oh, the Colts had time on the field. I mean, they might have won. At, anyway. the, the the odds were that it was going to be a tie. That's right. So Bill O'Brien still gets fired. Yeah, I think so. I think he gets fired early. All right, the other d- dumbest game of the day. All right. and, and, and I think outside of the chaos that happened in Miami, which is super exciting, the Cowboys game is the dumbest game of the day. That was – if it, nobody could have foreseen Amari Cooper – now, what's funny is Amari Cooper was at Alabama playing against Dak Prescott and, like, was making ridiculous catches and whatnot for Alabama back then. So so Dak knew that, look, if I just throw the ball up there, like, he can go that, get it. That has nothing to do with but, any of this. That's but, harking back to their college days when he was four years out of college is kind well, of and that's I know, I know, but that's that's the connection that they have, right? There's um, no connection. Well, that, playing I, the same conference I'm just four trying years ago. To, it, either way... Nobody could have foreseen this. 
this makes no sense that he is able to do this. And I've heard people try and explain it away as like, well, you know, o- Oakland had stopped uh, uh, focusing on him. They weren't running routes for him. But they the weren't Cowboys running are, routes for him. When you call a passing play, yeah, unless it's a quick screen, you call a route for everybody in the route. That's what and I thought. And the guy that gets open gets the ball nine times out of ten. I just I could not understand. He wasn't getting open, and he led the NFL in drops two seasons in a row. That has nothing to do with the route you're running. That is you can't get open. So yeah. so what that tells me is he wasn't trying. That's kind of what it And you can like. say, oh, but those Raiders teams are bad. Well, you know, you think of the Raiders today. Some of those Raider teams were playoff teams. We thought they could win the Super Bowl until what's-his-name Derek Carr breaks his leg. Like, like he was a legit MVP candidate. So don't let's not just think that a Cooper played on bad teams. They were they were Super Bowl favorites at one point in time. We well, were thinking it's, it's it going to be them in, in in the Patriots. It was his rookie AFC. year that that Carr broke his leg. That was his that was his rookie season. So, I mean, since then, you know, yeah, the year after that, he got the cases of uh, or the case of the drop season, whatnot. And then last year, just I would I, like to say that some of these catches, he is he is just the luckiest sob on the planet, where it just bounces up. Like and the 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 last catch in overtime, yeah, which that which just, a I think the Cowboys win that game anyway because if they were smart, they would have just kneeled it and kicked the field goal, so you don't have to worry about anything. That ball was going to the ground. That was a bad pass by Dak Prescott. Yeah. And the defensive guy, if he does nothing, the ball hits the ground. Yeah. But he tries to make a move on it anyway, which is fine because if you pick six it, then you win the game. And he didn't pick six it. It bounced off his hands. That's why he plays defense. And Cooper's like, oh, I've got the ball. Oh, the defensive guy dove for the ball. He can't stop me. Here, I'm going to put it in the end zone. The, the play that was ridiculous is – what's that guy's name? Dallas – I don't remember his last name. I should know it. I remember all the Philadelphia fans. The tight end that's not the good tight uh, end. Gort or Godert or whatever. Godor? Godot? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, whatever his name is. Anyway. Yeah. His first name is Dallas. Everybody in Philly wanted him to change his name legally because they're dumb. Um, <laughs> and he gets an, an offensive pass interference call on him that takes a touchdown off the board, which – Changes the game. Yeah. And Dallas loses that game in regulation. We never see overtime. And as soon as it happened, I thought, that's not offensive pass interference. Immediately they go to the the Fox goes to like their referee guy, I don't, I don't know who it is, and and says, They're gonna pick this flag up, watch, look at the officials, they're all they're about to wave this off. Like that's not pass interference. It's absolutely not pass interference. They don't wave it off. They call it offensive pass interference. They back them up 15 yards. They take the touchdown off the board. The Eagles don't score. And the Eagles lose that game. At at any point, and this is changing the subject just a, a hair, at any point in that game, did you think that Carson Wentz was hurt? No, I think Carson Wentz is not great. I don't think he's nearly as good as people thought he was last year. And I think there are times where he just looks – he looks bad and makes himself look hurt. Well, I'm, I'm just – I'm wondering because – like they are, I could be wrong. The news that, he could that be hurt. the news that came out. We're recording this on Wednesday, by the way. Uh, the news that came out today was that he may not play for the rest of the season because of a back injury, which is why the Rams line jumped. Remember, it opened at like eight. Yeah, and it jumped, and to now 11. it's like eleven and a half. Yeah. Here's here's my thought on that. That might be true. That might be right. I, I'm really really tired of some of these guys having bad games. And it's always, as soon as the game is over, oh, I was hurt. Oh, I shouldn't have been playing out there anyway. Oh, I was trying to dog it out. Yeah, you I'm know what? You. If you're good enough to play, if you're healthy enough to play, then play. And if you're not, then then sit out. If but you're don't use play, it as a crutch. You don't, you don't get to use it as a hurt. Big Ben is, is the greatest of it. Now, he is the toughest quarterback I have watched in a long time. But that guy is the biggest diva on the planet. We'll get to them. We'll just transition them. What the hell is going on? In Pittsburgh, he lost to the Raiders, man. All right, so defend so, your boys. Well, there's no defense in losing to the Raiders, right? Mike they, Tomlin. There's, there's just nothing you can do. I think Tomlin's job is on the line over the next three weeks. Uh, you got the Patriots. They're, they're, their schedule um, is not easy. 
They yeah, could, who, they who, could who, lose out. Who all do they have left? They got the Patriots. They've got. Uh, they've already played the Ravens twice. Yep. Uh, got oh, the they got they, at the Saints. Yep. Hang on. Patriots at home at the Saints. Is it and at, then, at New Orleans. I know they have New Orleans. Yeah, it is at, at New Orleans. Yeah. They're and then uh, da, 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 bad radio. How to pass them? I have no idea. <laughs> Maybe they're not. I mean, I know their logo pretty well. Oh, and then they've got home at Cincinnati. They'll win that one. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, home, they, home they, le- they legitimately could go. It'd be eight, seven, and one, one at that point, and you may not make the playoffs at that point. You might not win that division if Baltimore wins out. Well, that's that's what I'm saying. You may not make. Oh the playoffs, no, they're not period. making a wild card spot. No, they're not so making like, a wild card spot at eight, seven, and one. So, like, hang on. All right. So I know everyone's going to say, "Oh, well, you know, the kicker slipped and fell, but if he doesn't fall, they win the game." All it should bull never crap. come hang down on. to a kicker big bit, kicking the touch, to tie the game the against the Raiders. The touchdown to take the lead. Before the the Raiders took the lead back and won the game, Ben threw the exact same pass he threw the week beforehand that got picked off and taken to the house, and it almost got picked off again. If anybody else is playing that team other than the Raiders, if thirty one other defenses are playing that, they all pick it off and take it to the house. You play the one team that's bad enough at corner that can't pick six. That yeah, Ben is still I I he is lucky enough to be born in an area where he played in Pittsburgh. That's it. That's all he is. Other than that, he's Jameis Winston. He is the same person. He will not ever learn from his mistakes. If it, he's, he's got so much talent around him, he's looked at like he is great. But if you have to put the ball in his hands and nobody else's, he is going to make mistakes. If he has regular dudes catching for him and not – Juju Smith-Schuster, the fastest man on the planet, and Antonio Brown, the best receiver in the NFL, and a great offensive line. Historically, he's had great running backs. He's had great defenses to pick him up in the past. But I don't know what else you got to do to say, I'm just a dude. But he is just a guy. He puts up big numbers because the people around him are freaks. They're absolute freaks. He's got two Super Bowls because the people around him are freaks. But the difference between him and Jameis Winston is nothing. He's still going to throw the pick six at the end of the game to cost his team the game more times than he's not when he has to win the game. Now, they can blow people out. They're really good at blowing people out. Here's uh, here's your stat line that, uh, that, that should, I guess, give you pause, right? Uh... Stephen Ridley, who was filling in for for James Conner. Yep. Five rushes for four yards and a touchdown. Uh, You had Jalen Samuels from North Carolina State. Um, He's a rookie. He had 11 carries for 28 yards. And then you had Josh Dobbs, who came in and ran the ball uh, two times for 15 yards, and he threw four out of nine for 24 yards and one interception. Um, and that, in turn, basically cost him the game. Well, I get it. And if you look at Ben's stat line that game, he looks like an MVP. He's got like he's like twenty five of twenty eight. He only had like three turn or like uh, three missed passes or whatever incompletions. Incompletions. And uh, and and he you know he's got the touchdowns and and it looks amazing. If you watch him play, when when it comes time to win the game or lose the game, that guy if they're not blowing somebody out, yeah. I, I I said it week one when they were playing the Browns. If this game is close, keep putting it in Ben's hand. Please don't run oh, it. Yeah. Please don't throw little bubble screens, short passes, and let the receivers get out. Throw the ball down the field. Put it in Ben's hand and make him make a throw because we will pick that crap off every time. Yeah, I trust I trust him to turn it over more than I trust a defense to stop an athlete. Yeah, I I absolutely trust it. And he's and he's proven me right over and over again. I have no clue what's going on there, um, and I don't think they're going to get rid of Tomlin. Like I don't think they're going to make a move because that's not what the Steelers do. That's not typically what they do. But but from the reports that I have heard, ownership is not. Ha- I mean, it's it's run its course. Let it's me, been a long time. N- let me tell you the difference of what I believe. I believe that the Rooney family. Mr. Rooney, God rest his soul, RIP, not there. Okay? I don't think the first year without their dad 
they would do something so against what they have done as a family forever. You might be right. I mean, I, it, it depends I think, on like, I, okay, I'll tell I you I think this. that conversation is going to come up is, would dad have done it? Because this is the first year of them doing running the team without him. I think he would alive. have to completely lose the team, and I'm talking just get waxed in the next three games, not just two of oh, them. Oh, no, if, if he loses Cincinnati, you're right. Like, there, if, there he, is a, if he goes 7-9-1 and one no. and like loses five straight to end the season. You, you lose to this Cincinnati team that just can't. Can't even field a roster right now. Yeah, that that you're you're absolutely right. That's fireable. I can't imagine that happening. I mean, I guess I couldn't imagine that them losing to this Oakland team either. Oakland's actually fighting. They're trying hard. They just don't have talent. They don't yeah. have anybody there to win or to play. I don't know that the Bengals are trying anymore. I think they're beat up. They're done. Uh, I I want to close this. I, think I want the to Bengals close this. Tried week. against uh, the Chargers last week. I mean, they only lost. Oh, oh no, six, they no, they fought like hell. They fought like hell. Maybe the same thing. I just don't know if they have the dudes. I don't. Yeah, not right now. I mean, you got Jeff Driscoll playing quarterback. So well, AJ like, Green's out for the season. That yeah. guy's an absolute monster. Uh, we're we're gonna close out the recap. With, in my opinion, in my opinion, is different than most opinion. You might see it differently. A fifteen to six ball game that I absolutely smiled from the time it started until the time it ended, and I didn't stop. Our, our group text between I, me and you and uh, the guys from the Westlight Pirates was uh, you were euphoric. I, no, the entire I, game. I haven't One, enjoyed you were, you were behind. You didn't realize that the game had oh, been I know, paused. I know. And I'm like, so, so you're I'm talking about plays that are 30 minutes late to I'm us. coming on all these amazing things, <laughs> and you guys thinking I'm probably drunk. And, I, and, I, and I wasn't. the text, I'm like, did that just happen again? Is he ahead of me? Like what is? No, no, and then I, you'd be like, "Oh, oh sorry, sorry. I, just, I realized <laughs> I got caught up at halftime. I'm good." Yeah, yeah, I had, to, <laughs> yeah I, had to, I had to stop it for a little bit there. I was like 45 <laughs> minutes behind real time yeah. for a while. Um, defensive play after defensive play. I don't think it was offenses that are bad. I mean, I think we finally got a good defensive game in the in the NFL that was entertaining. Yeah, Khalil Mack is an amazing guy, and. The only offensive touchdown scored in the entire game, the only touchdown scored in the entire game was a fat guy touchdown. It was a pass like, to an offensive lineman. It's just it, it it everything I could possibly want it was in a in a football game. And when it's over, the second it's over, I would still, if I was a billionaire, give all my billion dollars to have Sean McVay as my coach. Yeah. I agree. I I don't care that he lost. I I am I'm almost schoolgirl crushes giddy over watching him in the in the Rams, which sucks because I'm not really a Rams fan. Like, there's nothing in me that wants to pull for an LA team. Like, I like the Chargers, but I was a San Diego guy when oh, they yeah. were there. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I was a Rivers guy long ago. Like that. That's a little different. There's nothing in me that wants to be a Rams fan, and it's just like I can't root against this dude. No, I, he's, I he's think fun. he is. Brilliant. So much smarter than everybody else in football, maybe in the world. Like, <laughs> like that kind of genius shouldn't be coaching a sport. Yeah, no, I can. Like, I, okay. like we give we give Belichick credit for being a genius, and we give Pop in in the NBA credit for being a genius. We give Saban credit for being a genius. Look, if sports didn't exist. These guys would struggle to be like PE teachers. Like, I don't know that they're some real, of them. I don't I know that McVay these guys would pretty, be. Oh no, like, that's all right, no, I'm about to. McVay, I think that Saban, guy, Belichick. No, like, no, 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 no. I disagree with that. Saban and Belichick are and Pop are too big of assholes. They would not survive in the corporate world. They absolutely would not survive in the corporate world. They don't know how to talk to people. They don't know how to treat people beneath them. And and they 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 they're good at sport. They're good at the sport that they run. They're absolute geniuses. I think if they had to run, you think their a company, organizational skills nope. and whatnot uh, would not. T I mean, you you really think that there are CEOs nope. out there that that, or there are not CEOs out there that that don't know how to treat their. Oh, they're absolutely are. employees, but, they're, and but they're really bad at what they do, and they get fired in a couple of years. Not always. Yeah, yeah, it happens a lot. Or they go from one CEO job to another CEO job. You know why they have to keep changing CEO jobs? Because they piss off the board. Because they can't get okay. along with folks. Okay. They're Jim Harbaugh. They're great at what they do. They make the company a gazillion dollars. But you got to go. Why? Because you just we just can't keep doing this. Because you're a jerk and we don't like you. I mean, Apple got rid of Steve Jobs in the heyday of his prime. Why? Because he was an asshole. He was too big. To, he, I I think those guys are. And and let's be careful. 
I think all those guys are really they're geniuses at their sport. I don't think they're geniuses. I think Sean McVay has shown with his memory and his intellect, his ability, the way his brain works. I okay. think he is a he. I absolutely think he's really a he's a genius. Okay, like okay. there's a difference between being a football genius and being a genius. If you can remember plays and the way they broke down and the way they happened three years ago from a team that you haven't coached in two years, then 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 I assure you that if you ran a company, you would be able to tell me the financials of that company two or three years ago and, and how they went through the ups and downs and the peaks and valleys and what they learned and what they didn't okay. to make you strong. I don't know that Saban – I know for a fact Saban, Belichick, Pop, the, the guys that I think are geniuses at, at the sport that they do, I know for a fact those guys couldn't do that. Okay. Not okay. saying that they would be bums. But but I absolutely do not think they would be anywhere close to what they are. Everybody else assumes that they would be fantastic CEOs, and I just disagree with that. I totally disagree with that. Okay, I can I can understand. I that. think Sean McVay. I if I had billions of dollars and I owned an NFL team, I would literally spend my day, and I don't care who my head coach was. I would wake up every day. And I'd call Sean McVay, and, and I'd say how much. I say, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> what, what do you? And I just make him an offer every day. And he said, "No, I'm good." Like, all right, and then hang up. I'll call you tomorrow. I'll, I'll, I'll we'll talk talk to you we'll tomorrow. Try it again, and and I'll just keep making offers. And one day he'll say, "Yeah." <laughs> I would just, I would. I, that's what I would do. That's how I would entertain myself every day at like two o five. I just call Sean, and we okay. talk for about four minutes. I'd ask him what he's doing, maybe what he's wearing, and and <laughs> what, what you wearing, Sean, and and uh, how's uh, how's your girlfriend? How, how are things? How's life? And uh, you ever seen his girlfriend or wife yeah, or whatever fine. she is now? Okay, I don't care. That's Ooh, fine. I'm not worried man. about that. I, none, of, none of that's relevant to me. That I doesn't just, have to be relevant. I'll, I would want to know. Bring it up a, a different topic. What does it take to get him to work for me? I'd give him yeah. ownership in a team, and I'm not even talking about small God. ownership. I'd give him. I'd give him a percentage of ownership of the team that was second to me, the head owner, and no other minority owner would have as much power as him. I think he's that kind of brilliant, and I could be dead wrong. I, in four years, we I mean, might be we're, looking we're at me. We're talking a year and a half, and he hadn't even won a playoff game. I know, I know yet. that. I know that. No, I know like, that. <laughs> I know that. Let, let's see. And, he and he's coming off. And he's year. coming off a loss. Oh uh, yeah, I know. That's it. Makes it even more crazy. So, and then, and then the final thing. I know that I said that's the last thing we're going to get to. One laugh after I've oohed and odd and gooed over Sean McVay. I want to talk about the Monday Night Football game, but I actually don't care about the game. Seattle won. They, it, it was such a close game in the fourth quarter. It just kind of turned into a rout and all fell apart. Well, it was two touchdowns in Monday, like six seconds. I mean, it was, you know. Monday, everybody – I guess that was Monday. Tuesday, yesterday, everybody's crushing Cousins. All these stats are coming out about how bad he is against good teams, how bad he is against playoff teams. All, all his just crapping on Kirk Cousins, and he is the problem of all these things. And then today, I hear this stat. Out of the six highest, because because they talk about not just how bad he is, but almost how much money he makes, because that's comparable. Like no one cares that Drift Driscoll is terrible because that guy's probably making Driscoll like makes like a three hundred three hundred grand a year. Like I don't know maybe what he no maybe. I know he makes a couple million. But anyway, whatever. It's beans to Kirk. Okay. Yeah. All right, cousins. Out of the top six highest paid quarterbacks in the NFL. We're all crushing him. We're all crapping on him. He is the only one out of the top six that even have a chance to make the playoffs. Yeah. So while we crush him, we should also remember he's a way better quarterback right now than Matt Stafford, Derek Carr, Jimmy G, who's hurt, Matt Ryan, and A.A. Ron, Aaron Rodgers. You uh you saw that the Vikings fired their offense coordinator, right? Yes. John DeFilippo, who they just brought in this offseason. Yes. Uh so uh, everybody that wanted to talk about the Vikings uh, who who was running their offense last year? Pat uh Shermer. Pat he's Shermer. with he's with the Giants now. Yeah, it, so I don't know that it was necessarily Case Keenum and I don't know that it's necessarily Kirk Cousins' fault that things That's aren't right. working. I think Shermer I think Pat was Shermer a was a great offense. offensive coordinator. Correct. And so, I think replacing Shermer's hard, and they went to the Super Bowl champs, Philadelphia Eagles, and said, hey, we'll take their OC, and maybe we can do Well, we'll the take their thing. quarterback coach. Quarterback coach, yeah. That's yeah. It. And, and I, don't, I don't know that that helps. 
Um, Filippo, here's a, so I heard, who was it? It was one of the ringer guys. It was either Lombardi or, or um, Kevin Clark. I, I like listening to those guys. I think they're really smart. Um, one of them brought this up. Filippo is a great play designer. But okay. being a play caller and a play designer are totally different. You can design plays all day long, but if you don't know the right play calls against certain defenses, it doesn't it doesn't well, and, matter. And in specific situations. Yes. Yeah. And, and and it had to be Lombardi because Lombardi gets way more in the weeds of coaching because he understands it a lot more um, as he's worked in front offices and been assistant coaches. Uh, he, he was talking about against the defense of Seattle – you have to attack them. These great creative plays that they run, which is why there are games where they can score 38 points a game and they look awesome. But when you play a defense that's so aggressive and so physical with your guys, you can't just run creative plays because they're taking a lot of the creativity away with how physical they are with your receivers. Yeah, You have to attack them with your athletic receivers. You have to let your receivers get down the field Get up now. A lot of that you got to have better offensive line play than they're getting. So yeah. there's a lot of tricks involved in it. But he said, but you can't just. Have, he said, I don't think Filippo is De Filippo is a bad OC, but but he needs to be working for a coach that is going to call the plays. Yeah, because he can design offenses very very well. We have seen him do that at multiple different stops. That guy knows how to design offenses. He's very good at it. He's good at working with quarterbacks. He should not be the one to be the play caller because that's not what he has ever done. Well, really, he was uh, – I mean, what do you what do you call it? He was the third in line in Philly? Yes. Right, so you had Peterson. Because Peterson and then does you had call. Frank Reich. Peterson does call the plays. And then, well, and then Reich was the offensive coordinator. That's right. And now he's with the Colts. And then DeFilippo with was – yeah. And but, I think a lot of that might be and, why the Eagles are having trouble this year as well. But he you know. com- but he also comes from the Andy Reid tree. Andy yeah. Reid also calls plays. Like like everywhere he's been successful designing plays, he's learned under some of the best play designers in the league, and he can do that. Yeah, but absolutely. he he absolutely needs to have an OC or not an OC uh, a head coach that is the play caller. Yes, or somebody that calls plays besides him. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But but he, you. you can't be an OC and not be the play caller and not be the head coach. Like that that doesn't that doesn't work. I mean it, it, like it it's all just titles, right? Like That's it's right. it's all just titles. So if there was a quarterback's coach that was like great at calling the plays, that he would be you the OC designed, and you would be the quarterback coach. It, like you would change titles because those titles also bring with them money. Well, not just money, but responsibility. Yeah. No, you you're right. You're right. I I think DeFilippo, because Sean McVay is going to lose his OC every year. That's just going to happen. Somebody's going to hire the OC at, at the Rams to try to get because you're next always Sean trying McVay. to be like you're. That's going to get happen. As close to the genius. Sh- as Sean McVay needs to hire DeFilippo to help him design plays to be really creative. But McVay's going to always call the plays, and they didn't yeah. have to worry about hiring a new OC every year. Yeah, because because I think DeFilippo's done trying to. Call, I think I think the book is out that he's really good at play design. He's not good at this. Yeah, I think that makes sense. And McVay will I mean, he's, never he's not go, be the play call. He'll be. He's got to go Reed. back to the drawing board. <laughs> so, anyway. all right, that's uh, that is the Week 14 NFL recap. Uh, go to tunicatravel.com. dot com. Go to winningcureseverything dot com. Uh, if you're listening on the podcast, we're moving to our top five, bottom five. 